Welcome to the channel SRC Codes and today we are going to talk about Scrum certifications and the first one that we discuss today is PSM1 which is provided by scrum.org and something about me uh, I used to be a business consultant and then I took a six-year career break so after six years I have no experience in agile or scrum methodology I worked for only two weeks and I passed PSM1 in the first attempt. Hence, I think I'm pretty much qualified to share my experience with you here. And let's get to it. The first thing I would like to do is set a disclaimer. This is not a video about Scrum or Agile or Kanban because uh, even though I do own the certifications, I really respect the people who have been practicing it for the past decade and have so much more experience about it. This is simply a video about how to prep and clear the certification. So a shout out to all those people who are Scrum Masters right now or Agile coaches. I am by no means stating that I am one. I intend to, but uh, this is just to help you get that pass marks, which is 85% in your PSM1 exam. I had only about 10 days to prepare and clear the exam, but I would like you to spend at least two weeks doing that. So I've broken down the training sessions, uh, our discussions into two parts, like two weeks before the exam and one week before it. So let's get to it. The first important point is that you decide that you want to take the test and that is your congratulations for doing that and uh, let's get started on what you can do. What is PSM1? PSM1 is Professional Scrum Master, uh, does, uh, that's the certification and uh, we are talking about Professional Scrum Master 1. There are three levels. So this is the first level. Uh, the structure is such that you will have 80 questions and you would have to answer them in 60 minutes. And the pass max, uh, like the score that you need to hit is 85%. So that's pretty steep. And also you don't have much time. So there is a lot of time management uh, involved here. The first thing that I would suggest you do is go to scrum.org and create an account and register there and just look around. Second thing that you should do is download the Scrum Guide. Remember that we now have the 2020 version, which changed, uh, I think which was published in November 2020. So that's the updated one. The previous one that's there is for the 217, 2017. Uh, kind of please ensure that you are using the right version. And if you go to scrum.org, they do have a online version and a link to download it. So if you download it, it comes to grossly around 14 pages. So that's the first thing you should do. Get an account, register there, download your Scrum Guide, go through it. And please don't underestimate it that it's just a 14 page document. It is not. It is so content heavy in terms of the thoughts and the ideas that are presented there. It is not verbose, so it, uh, it's really very precise and leaves a lot to your interpretation. So take your time and read and reflect. That's the first thing you should do. The first time you go through, read and reflect. And then when you are ready to go through it for the second time, add your own notes in the margin. That will go a long way in carving your understanding. The third thing, you've gone through the Scrum Guide once and thought about it as well. I would suggest that you take the Scrum Open Assessment. Now that is available in the scrum.org site website and it's free. It's a, it has 30 questions and it gives you a time of 30 minutes. But uh, do take that at this point of time when you're just starting off in week, two weeks before the test. The reason I'm asking you to take it is not to score or pass the test just to get an idea to develop how it looks because when you actually take the assessment the look and feel is going to be just like this how much time it takes i think it takes about three seconds to load a question the flow of it the structure just to familiarize yourself so that when you go back and read again you have at the back of the head you are developing a framework on what you are how you're going to be assessed with so on the first week of your preparation, that is two weeks before the test, I would suggest just simply go through the 
questions and don't expect to pass them the first time but you will develop an understanding on how the flow of questions are how they are structured you will know that most of the questions are choose the best answer so you will find that you are instantly able to rule out two but two of the options would be close to uh, you know you will be have to decide so uh, do go through that just to develop a general idea at this stage and uh, also start saving them i always saved a pdf so that they give you a detailed explanation on where you went wrong and uh, what the correct answer is and over time i really had 15 to 30 anything between 15 to 30 pdfs that i was going through and to get an understanding like i knew my mistakes so i wouldn't repeat them the next time another thing that you should refer is the glossary uh, go through that that's very important because that gives you a snapshot of all the main items that are discussed like the roles the artifacts also the i must uh, confess that i took the exam in december and some changes have taken place uh, these are not very um, these are not very major changes in terms of the idea but they are changes nonetheless like right now they are using the terms uh, self-managing instead of self uh, organizing there is a uh, the term the scrum team the size of the scrum team right now is uh, proposed to be anything less than 10 earlier uh, in the 2017 guide it was like plus minus uh, seven members so those are the minor changes that have uh, occurred but uh, grossly the ideas are still the same there is more uh, emphasis on accountability rather than roles and previously scrum master was always defined as a servant leader now there is a more emphasis on leadership so these are one of the few ideas here and there on the word the changes in terms of the word and the meanings they hold but uh, you must go through the glossary because that will give you a pretty good idea on what every term means now if i could sh uh, show you there is also a uh, what is scrum this is given there and here you will not only find the scrum guide you will find the scrum team the glossary the scrum framework there is a short video which is really good the values the teams events artifacts and this page if you go through it has all the links that you really need to follow to appear for this exam so i strongly suggest i'll put the link below uh, so that you know where to find this in case you have you will have 80 questions and you would have to answer them in 60 minutes and the pass max uh, like the score that you need to hit is 85 percent that's pretty steep and also you don't have much time so there is a lot of time management uh, involved here to clear the exam so when you are starting off two weeks before the test uh, i wouldn't focus that much on the time management because this week is mainly for you to develop your understanding about scrum and the all that it entails starting from the roles artifacts and all the things that we discussed and uh, you should go over the scrum guide multiple times and also the scrum open will give you ideas on which are the concepts that you are having trouble with understanding so uh, do that in when you are at the position that you're going to take this test 10 days or 14 days after this point of time so the the first week you should build on work on building your concepts your understanding of scrum and read a lot about it there's a lot of material on this website it says scrum.org and um, i would not suggest going into youtube videos at this stage not too many of them are specifically for this test because they give you an idea about agile and scrum and also remember if you are working in a scrum team as of now uh, ensure that the answers that they seek are from the concepts directly picked from the scrum guide like there must be some practices or some approaches that are followed in your team but not necessarily true as for the scrum guide so when you answer your assessment please uh, remember that the questions have been structured so that to test your knowledge about scrum guide so you will be answering as per the guide not per your real experience so i guess i leave you this enough material for uh, week one of your prep so in this week you're going to the scrum guide you're visiting the glossary you're going to all the links on the water scrum 
the Taj and you are also taking the Scrum Open Assessments. Now the assessments uh, I think have a pool of around 100 or more questions so they will change so if you take the assessments in a day probably twice you will see that some of them are same but some change so over time the more you take the assessments you will actually uh, develop a repository of the questions that uh, you know are there in the pool of 100 or more now also remember that uh, i think you can expect that around of those 80 questions around 30 or more could appear from this pool so if you can prepare yourself to a point that you have developed a memory you know about how to answer them you save a lot of time on them the more time you save on these known questions is the time you get to pick your brain over the ones that you don't know so this is what you do in week one thank uh, good luck with that and we'll talk about uh, week before the test in the next video thanks for watching